What's up everyone, welcome to Film Focused. Today I'm bringing you guys a list of six accessories that every film photographer should own. These are all my opinion and things that I own and use every day when I'm shooting, and I think that any photographer who enjoys shooting film will benefit from having these if you don't already own them. Now keep in mind, these are all my opinions and these are all things that I think you should buy, but these also make great gift ideas it is the holiday season, so if you're looking for some last-minute gifts for a friend or a family member that is into film photography, these are all affordable and very good ideas that you can get them. So without any further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, film files. These are super, super important when you're done shooting your film and scanning it. You're going to need something to protect your film and keep it safe. These are super cheap, they're very easy to find, they're all over the internet. I buy mine from Amazon or B&H for really cheap, like packs of 50 and 100 are like 10 or 15 bucks. And these come in all shapes and sizes for all the different formats. You can get 35 millimeter medium format, 4x5, and 8x10 sheet um, film files. Now, uh, not only can you get all those formats, but all those different formats have kind of different configurations. You can get, the, this one holds like six uh, images for 35 millimeter. You can get some that hold five or four. Um, actually, I don't think they make any four, just five. Um, but for like medium format, you have six, four, five, six by six, six by seven, and six by nine. And they make film files specifically for all those different formats. So you know which camera you own, you can go online and find the exact one that's gonna work for you. Um, like I said, super cheap, very easy to find, and a must-have. Next up, every film photographer needs a good light meter. Now, if you're just getting started and you don't want to spend any extra money on a light meter, I have two great options for you. One, a digital camera. Odds are you already own one, and that probably has a light meter in it. Especially if you've bought an older camera, um, older film camera that doesn't have a working light meter, or it's just not very accurate, if it's known to be a little funky, bring your digital camera along and then you can get a proper exposure um, looking through your LCD screen, and then you can go ahead and shoot with the film camera. Now, even though this works, it's still kind of clunky and it's just a little annoying having to carry two camera bodies around. So the next best thing would be getting a phone app on your iPhone or your Android phone. And those are fine, they work great, and they're really cheap, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I don't trust them. I just don't like being on my phone when I'm shooting. And the best option that I think that would work for you is a Sekonic light meter. Now, this is one of the more, if not the most expensive thing on this list. And this runs about $100, but you're only going to need one and it will last you forever as long as you take care of it. Um, these are designed to be very functional and easy to use and switch between settings. And you also have the ability to use a reflective light meter, a spot meter, and if you like to shoot in the studio, this can do that too. So all your bases are covered. Um, you know, it's a smaller, or excuse me, it's a larger investment, but it's only $100. They're made really well, and you won't need anything else other than this. So a must-have for any film photographer. Next up is what I think is the most underrated accessory for any camera, and that is a good camera strap. The difference between a good and a bad camera strap can make the difference between a one hour shooting session or shooting all day and not even thinking about it. And this is all based on personal preference, but I'm just gonna share mine with you. So if I'm just shooting handheld and want to be walking around and, and shooting street or just documentary or just like friends and family as we're, you know, doing what we do. Uh, I like to have my F100 on this nice climbing rope strap. And this is a high quality 10 millimeter climbing rope. Um, it's super strong. It's never going to break. And it's um, woven into this nice uh, leather kind of clip, if you will. And I wear this cross body. Like this, it's super comfortable. Um, it makes it really easy to just bring this up to my face and then let it down by my waist. This way it's not like getting in the way of me walking. It's a little bit less obvious that I have a camera on me 
And I think these look a lot better than your typical DSLR camera strap that says like Nikon or Canon on it. I think those look kind of kooky and it looks kind of touristy. I don't, I don't like them and they're pretty uncomfortable because they're very thin. Whereas this or, or another camera strap that you buy to fit your style of shooting, that will have a positive influence on the way that you shoot and it will make you more comfortable while you're shooting as well. Now, if you're like me and you do like shooting on a tripod, whenever I'm shooting on a tripod, I hate having a camera strap attached. I'm always afraid I'm gonna accidentally hook it with my elbow or my hand and knock the whole tripod over and break my camera. So a great option for someone like you or me that is afraid of that happening are these fat straps. These are made of nice high quality cotton. They're nice and thick, so they're very comfortable on your neck. But what I think is the coolest thing about these is they have these high quality plastic clips that allow you to clip on or off your camera strap whenever you need it or you don't. So now I can attach my Mamiya 7 to a tripod and I don't have to worry about accidentally catching that and knocking the camera over. Super nice, very convenient, um, and very affordable. I think this uh, climbing rope strap was like $25, and I think fat straps run from anywhere between like $18 and $30. Um, I'm not exactly sure. This was actually a gift from my brother. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I love this thing. So I've had this for a few years now, and it's just stayed on my Mamiya 7 this whole time. So the last three accessories I'm going to share with you are all lens filters. However, they're very different from one another and have very specific purposes. All of these filters can range from $5 to $10 for something that's an entry-level filter, all the way up to $100 or a few hundred dollars. And I suggest, especially when you're starting out, paying anywhere between $10 and $20 will get the job done, and it won't result in really terrible image quality. You're not going to notice a big difference. So first off, let's talk about UV filters. These are the most important filters to own, and you should have one UV filter for every lens that you have. These should stay on your lenses at all times because not only do they help cut through atmospheric haze, but they help protect the front element of your lens. Now, let's say you spent $100 just on a lens filter and it ends up getting scratched. Well, you can just spend another $100 on a filter but your lens is still totally fine. Whereas if you weren't shooting with a filter on, you scratch the front element of your lens, now you're out that lens and a few hundred dollars of repairs. Or even worse, let's say you broke the front element, now you have to get a whole new lens. So UV filters, even if they're super cheap or expensive, are well worth the money. Next up, let's talk about neutral density filters, or ND filters. They're basically sunglasses for your lens. Depending on how strong of a filter you have, that will result in a one, two, three, four stop increase of light that you need to properly expose your film. I like to shoot with ND2 and ND4 filters um, whenever I'm shooting HP5, push to 1600, or Portra 800. By requiring more light to come into the camera, I can then shoot my lenses wide open in the broad daylight even though I'm shooting a very fast film speed. Just like the UV filters, you get what you pay for. So if you're just getting started and want to try it out, buy like a 10 or a $15 filter. If you want to spend a little bit more money for the best quality for your price, I would say spend somewhere around like $20 or $30 and you won't really notice any um, you know, bad effects on your images. Last but not least, let's talk about black and white contrast filters. Now, these are specific to black and white photography, but the result that you get from shooting these is absolutely amazing. So depending on what color filter you're using, it will have a different contrast effect on the film. The most commonly, I guess, known filter is probably the red filter. If you've ever seen a black and white image that has a really dark sky with really bright white clouds and really stark but pretty contrast, that was most likely shot with a red filter. The way that these filters work is they allow certain wavelengths of light to come through the filter and then they'll block other wavelengths. So with the red filter, it will let red light through, but it makes it more difficult for blue light to transfer through the, lens, um, through the filter. So the most common ones are yellow, orange, red, and green. 
And those are really the four that I think you should buy. Now, to get a very good quality filter, um, individually, you're going to pay at least $25 or more. This is a newer kit that I found on Amazon for like $13, and it works great. Now, are they the best quality? No. Um, will they scratch easily and get fingerprints on them really easily? Yes, but they get the job done, and this is a great option for someone who is just looking into this and seeing if this is something that they would like to use. I've been using these for a little while now. I love them and I will be investing in a much better um, set of filters very soon. But like I said, this only costs $13, so a great investment if you're just getting into black and white photography and want to experiment with some color filters. All right, that just about does it. Let me know what you guys think down below. Did I miss anything that you think is a necessity for a film photographer? And what other accessories do you shoot with that you think everyone should own? If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video while you're at it. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you next time.